Starship was designed to be a reusable spacecraft. This means re-entry was a must for this broomstick. Well, this is definitely the biggest challenge because it has to be firmly designed to withstand the enormous amount of heat generated by friction between the ship's hull and the air when moving at high speeds. Historically, there have been several spacecraft explosions during its re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. The most notable is the Columbia disaster in spring of 2003, killing all seven astronauts on board. To avoid that, SpaceX has added and upgraded the necessary features to help the Starship's upper stage return home safely. One of them is the flap section, which the company conducted several changes on that make the vehicle more reliable than Space Shuttle's Columbia spacecraft. This totally shocked the entire industry. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. Elon Musk aims to launch Starship three times per day with an average speed of about 1,000 flights per year. It can be said that this is extremely ambitious and challenging because according to some people, helping a spacecraft enter orbit is very difficult. However, one thing that is not less important, especially for reusable rockets, is that you must ensure that it is also intact when it returns. The re-entry process is by far the most strenuous period for the ship since in low Earth orbit, Starship will be traveling no less than 7.8 kilometers per second at the start of atmospheric re-entry. As a result, most of that kinetic energy turns into heat, causing the ship's underbelly could be exposed to temperatures of around 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit, which can destroy the steel alloy. To dramatically lessen peak heating, the spacecraft uses its aerodynamic control surfaces and body to generate lift, slowly and carefully lowering itself into Earth's atmosphere. On the other hand, Musk has to accept the fact that Starship will take more time, particularly approximately 20 minutes from orbit to touchdown, resulting in the overall amount of energy Starship has to dissipate, will be increased. Starship's re-entry profile is quite similar to NASA's now-retired space shuttle, which took approximately 30 minutes to go from its re-entry burn to touchdown. But the space shuttle landed on a runway like a cement-encased glider, while the Starship free falls perpendicular to the ground for the last few dozen kilometers before aggressively flipping into a vertical orientation at the last second and landing propulsively on its tail. The flap then played an important role in controlling the orbit of the spacecraft and over time this part has undergone many evolutions. In the original design, the upper stage, known as Big Falcon Rocket or BFR for short at that point, included a small delta wing at the rear end with split flaps for pitch and roll control. The delta wing and split flaps were said to expand the flight envelope to allow the ship to land in a variety of atmospheric densities, including vacuum, thin or heavy atmosphere with a wide range of payloads. Starship's unusual approach to Earth allows SpaceX to sidestep the need for huge wings, preventing Starship from wasting far more mass on aerodynamic surfaces it will rarely need. Meanwhile, the Space Shuttle is famous for its massive tile-covered delta wing and leading-edge shielding. It can be said that this design of NASA's spacecraft has an extremely obvious drawback. The faster the plane flies, the more difficult it is to keep those wings from breaking. This is why you see some of the fastest aircraft in the world have very swept-back wings that don't extend as far from the craft. In the specific case of the space shuttle, remember that the shuttle fell into the atmosphere at a speed greater than any aircraft ever travels. And it did so with its underside fully rushing against the air. The wings had to endure a fantastic amount of stress. If they had extended very far from the shuttle at all, they would have snapped right off. Notice that, even as stubby as they were, they still had to be made fairly thick to withstand the stresses they were under. Although it is considered to have an advantage over the space shuttle, Elon still did not settle down the original design of the flaps. As a result, between 2018 and 2021, the public has witnessed several changes in this part of Starship. In 2018, under the Dear Moon project, Musk announced a planned 2023 lunar circumnavigation mission. He showed a redesigned BFR concept with three rear fins and two front canard fins 
replacing the previous delta wing and split flaps. Jumping into September 2019, Musk further detailed the upper stage's method of controlling its descent. The aft flaps on the spacecraft were reduced from three to two. Both sets of flaps helped to control the spacecraft's descent and the aft flaps would function as landing legs for the final touchdown. Since then, the number and structure of flaps have not changed too much. But in an August 2021 tweet, Elon said there was a small error in the front flap design, leading to some small but visible changes on future prototypes of the spacecraft. The small error, he said, is that the passive section is counterproductive as it pushes the nose backward. Thus, he said that the Starship would have an arrow tweak to its nose flaps for better usage of the movement arm. This is something that would be a massive technical concern for SpaceX, especially as it would face a lot of winds as it flies away from the surface and back at it. According to Musk, to improve the moment arm such as leverage or all else equal, torque of Starship's forward flaps and reduce or remove undesirable aerodynamic characteristics, SpaceX is going to shrink those forward flaps further, move them closer together and more towards the tip of Starship's nose, and angle them toward the ship's leeward side or in back. Those relatively minor changes mean that a portion of Starship's forward flaps will no longer be directly subjected to re-entry heating, potentially allowing SpaceX to entirely remove static aero covers that wrap around the ship's flaps to prevent superheated plasma and gas from reaching sensitive components. In the first Starship orbital flight on April 23, this new design was tested and no incidents related to the flaps were reported. We can see that shifting the flaps from the passive to the moving status is beneficial. At this point, some would wonder whether SpaceX continues to evolve Starship's flaps. Actually, I have no idea about it, but there is a truth that instead of upgrading it, Elon is now moving to ditch this section on some variants of the Starship. It's true. You know, in the context of reusable rockets, besides the thermal protection tiles, Flaps will play a role in helping spacecraft reach Earth safely. For an expendable version, they are not necessary. I mean, Elon Musk aims to build a version of Starship that will never return to Earth after launch, which he mentioned in a February 2023 tweet. Recently, we witnessed the presence of Ship 26 look naked meaning no heat shield tiles and flaps. Many speculated that Ship 26 could be a futuristic depot, under SpaceX's preparation activities for the Artemis III program scheduled in late 2025. According to the program, SpaceX will have to launch one lunar lander with various tankers and depots accompanied. Among them, SpaceX has no intention of returning the lander and depot to Earth. The removal of the flaps and thermal protection layers reduces the total mass of the vehicle, thus its payload capacity will improve significantly. On its website, the company also notes that the Starship in reusable mode can load from 100 to 150 tons of cargo and for the expendable, up to 250 tons. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time 